All right, let's talk about Jeff Akuda, the Atlanta Falcon now, a guy who, you know, was picked third overall, if you hadn't heard, was definitely hyped up. And, well, I think there's definitely some revisionist history. There were plenty of things to like about him coming out of college. But in the NFL, it has just gone very poorly. If you look at his pro football focus grades, you'll notice that, like, he did get better each year he was in the league. Now, I do think that maybe we uh, judged him a bit too harshly given how his career started. With In 2020, he played for Matt Patricia, which was, you know, again, I'm not sure I'm going to hold anyone ag- you know, uh, hold against anyone too much for having a bad year with Matt Patricia. We saw, you know, what happened with Darius Slay uh, in those years. Like, it, you know, it, it was a tough scheme. He was asked to do a lot and didn't look very good in that situation. He also made some mistakes on top of it. You can't completely, you know, his grade in terms of coverage was 30.9. That's terrible, right? But in 2021, he got injured, and that's kind of where everyone really sort of gave up on him. Okay, you know, he had one terrible year and then gets injured for another year, but that's not entirely fair. And in 2022, he did show some flashes. I thought that he got pretty overrated. Uh, Some people were saying that he was, like, living up to his, you know, potential of being the third overall pick. That just wasn't true. That was never true. He kind of had a couple good games early on and really, uh, you know, kind of struggled the rest of the way. But still was a up and down fine player. He was an NFL caliber player, which is the most we had seen from him at that point. Still a below league average coverage grade at uh, 54.4, but really good run defense and tackling, which is something he actually did very well even in 2020 in that uh, terrible Matt Patricia year. Let's head over to some film. Let's talk about what he did well, what he did poorly, and what he's going to bring to the Atlanta Falcons. And, you know, again, uh, Falcons kind of didn't give up a ton for him. And I think what's actually also worth mentioning is the contract, which we'll get to in a second. It's it's not like they're paying nothing for him. But anyways, let's get into the film. Let's start off with this play. It's going to be a one-on-one matchup on the outside going up against Garrett Wilson, who, again, Good receiver. One of the things that might help uh, help out Akuda a lot, and I do think will help out Akuda a lot, is he's not going to get these you know big time matchups. He's not going to go up against you know other teams' number one receivers or even number two receivers. Typically, you expect him to be the third receiver uh, at best going into the season. But anyway, you see how right off the bat, you're going to see, uh, you know, while there was a little bit of contact by Wilson, you know, Akuda was not really able to absorb it too well. And now Wilson has the inside leverage, which given this scheme, given the fact that it was a, uh, you know, a man coverage play with no help over the middle, basically you cannot be letting there be a window here. I think Akuda closes nicely, but it was just too little too late. Uh, it was a good throw and good catch, and they're able to pick up a decent you know, gain on that one. I wouldn't consider that a bad play by Akuda necessarily. I think that's a fine play, and that kind of is how I view Akuda as a player. Is like, okay, he's, you know, for the most part, doesn't get too wide, way out of position, but he's also someone who, he's he's definitely beatable. I think that no one's going to deny that. Now, and it's also worth mentioning, I guess, it's not like he never gets himself out of position either. One of the things that really hurts him, and I think is part of why, uh, to me, he's probably more of a slot corner or a safety, maybe a slot corner safety hybrid, is he's just not the fastest receiver. Like heading over to this play, I also uh, I called him not the fastest receiver, which is true, but he's not, I meant to say not the fastest corner. Uh, anyways, what's happening here is this uh, looks like it's quarters coverage. So with a receiver running a deep route, he is going to take on that deep route outside the numbers. Watch how one this play begins. It's kind of an even matchup at this point. But one of the things that, you know, part of why I harp on speed so much for cornerbacks is you see it happen all the time where these really hyped up corners who seemingly have no real faults uh, end up being really busts at the NFL level. A big part of it is typically speed. That's usually how that happens. Like Vernon Hargraves had that happen. Like a lot of these guys, uh, you know, uh, it's speed tends to be the biggest issue and tends to be why a lot of players fail. And I think that that's the case of Akuda as well, because he's not out of position right here. Watch, he's going to continue running. He just, he's not fast enough to keep up. Like, that's kind of what happened. Eventually, the ball was uh, sort of thrown a bit back, but he couldn't adjust to it because he got himself out of position. Like, that's the issue with Jeff Vakuda at the end of the day is speed, which, listen, 
it doesn't just hurt you on deep stuff because there's the other aspect where on non-deep routes, you don't know it's going to not be a deep route. So you're giving up more space, which means now you're more susceptible to get beaten underneath. When you don't have the speed, that is typically, you know, it, it just makes things so much more difficult as a corner. Guys have been successful at, as slower corners. It absolutely has happened. Like Marcus Peters ran a 4-5. You know, James Bradbury ran a 4-5. It happens, but it's the exception, not the rule. And so for Akuda, basically, you just don't want to put him in one-on-one -on -one matchups on the outside which I don't think Atlanta will unless they have to due to injury. But I want to talk about some of the positives from Akuda because there are some positives. Like I said, really good run defender. I don't have any plays to show that, but he is a very good run defender. And I actually think if they had him as kind of a slot corner, I think things could work better. We're like something like this, which is an outside route, but it's going to kind of still be still showcase what he can do when he's you know at his best. On this play, similar to the last one, he does give up the inside leverage, but a lot less so this time. There isn't as much space as there was last time, and I think that's definitely a big, uh, you know, big difference in why that first play I showed you in this play, why we're going to see different outcomes, is Akuda is not giving up any separation and is ready to come in and make a play, and also there is a help over the middle on this one. So for Zach Wilson, he has to make this throw now if he's going to make it, and this is where the good side of Akuda is going to shine through. Watch him step in front, and he is able to knock that ball away. Really good stuff there from Jeff Akuda, who, I, you know, that's kind of what I like about him, is he does have good ball skills, and it does feel like as long as he's not getting himself just away from the ball due to not being fast enough to keep up, or getting himself out of position due to fear of getting beat down the field, he's actually, I would say, very good at this stuff. So that's kind of maybe the exciting thing is I do think he is someone who, if used properly, could be an effective player. Now, how effective? I don't know. There is a wild card, but like I do see a scenario where he could be good. One other play I noticed I wanted to bring up, and this little thing I've noticed as well, is sometimes he doesn't take advantage of the opportunities that are in front of him, where it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup uh, on the outside, another sort of slant route, and he's going to do some things very well here. Watch, once again, this time he's not giving up the inside leverage, he's actually jumping the route, he's in position to get an interception right here, and the ball is kind of going right his, in his direction. However, he's just not able to make that grab right there. There are some times where as much as I like his ball skills, sometimes I feel like he can take more of an advantage about it, get an interception here and there. But as a whole, I would still say that's a good play. Like he's able to undercut that route and everything. And if you put him in situations where, hey, he's not worried about getting beat deep, because let's be honest, if that was a go route, it's a touchdown probably, which is a dangerous situation. But the fact that it was not, and the fact that he's able to do that stuff is where he thrives and where he's at his best. So yeah, it's a very interesting flyer uh, for Akuda. And it is also worth mentioning that, you know, uh, Detroit actually paid a decent chunk of his salary. So uh, they're actually only going to pay $3.6 million for him. So while the contract itself is a bit higher, because again, when you pick third overall, you have to pay a little bit of money for that guy. But at the end of the day, uh, it's not a, not a massive cap hit for Atlanta. So it's certainly interesting to see, uh, you know, how all of this is going to work out and what's going to happen here with, uh, with Akuda. So yeah, I'm fascinated to see how it'll work. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.